Robert F. Kennedy Jr. running the Department of Health? It's got to be a joke, right? It's no weirder than Matt Gates being appointed as Attorney General. These appointments might seem ridiculous to us because we're living in reality, and hence we judge Trump's actions based on our shared reality. But Trump isn't the full ticket. The corporate media have gone right back to that place where they cover everything Trump says and does like it's legitimate, normalizing his insanity to fit the formula of their legacy news gathering. Rewriting his insane ramblings to sound like he can structure a sentence, sane washing his speeches to give clarity to confusion, and then Trump invents the weave to throw people off the scent of his insanity. Donald Trump is extremely mentally ill. His brain function is so compromised that to him, the appointment of an anti-vax conspiracy theorist to lead the Department of Health and Human Services is a perfect match or choosing a, a man who's been federally investigated over allegations of sex trafficking of a 17-year-old, obstruction of justice, and now has an infamous mugshot from his DUI arrest in 2008, Matt Gates might seem wholly inappropriate for the role of Attorney General. But maybe that's the whole point. There's several layers to these insane appointments and several potential explanations. Firstly, Trump is extremely impressionable. He might pretend to be a strongman dictator, but like many strongman dictators, he's a weak and cowardly man-child who needs constant reassurance and adulation. Therefore, his advisors, closest allies and confidants will all be sycophants, but also manipulators. People who are either brainwashed into thinking that Trump has a skill set or people who are on the payroll earning handsomely and therefore don't want to rock the boat. They know which side their bread is buttered and so they play him on behalf of a higher power. You see, Trump is so easy to manipulate that he's been played by Putin, by Kim Jong, by Xi Jinping, by Orban, by Erdogan, even Benjamin Netanyahu. All they have to do is blow a little smoke up his back passage and they have him eating out the palm of their hands. This is why he celebrates these leaders and uses them as referees for his regime and won't have a bad word said about them. Meanwhile, he ignores or abuses all of our Western allies who have his number. Anyone who publicly denounces Trump as a fraud is out of the circle of trust. Because pretending that Trump is smart or has skills, is a great leader, is the confidence trick that keeps him afloat. The entire thing is a scam. Hence why, if you don't play the game, you're out. So combine that loyalty ticket with Trump's mental illness, his narcissistic personality disorder, his egomania, his broken inner child, his insecurity, insecurity about his weight or his hair or his height, his intelligence, his cognitive function. This is why he projects his deep feelings of inadequacy on his opponents. Every criticism is a confession. Trump is an open book of dysfunction. And that brings us back to these ludicrous cabinet appointments. Trump has run out of experienced, educated, intelligent candidates. Nobody wants to work for him. Anybody with a shred of dignity has either left Trump's orbit or has left politics completely. Trump is left with a the chaff. There is simply no wheat left to work with. Remember all the former staffers, including military generals who signed letters denouncing Trump as a fascist and threat to democracy? Well, they're off the list. So the only candidates left in Trump's orbit who are willing to kiss the ring and have egos that allow them to say yes to these roles that they're wholly unqualified for are the clowns, the waifs and strays of Mar-a-Lago, the plus ones, the curious characters that have been rejected by the mainstream. You might call them fringe candidates like Trump himself, outcasts and underdogs who have had to resort to drama to get on the map, extremists, people with unconventional views of the world who are also prepared to tell Trump everything he wants to hear, and people who themselves are so damaged that they would even accept these positions without any experience. I mean, if you or I were asked to lead the military, having only ever hosted a weekend show on Fox News, we would probably say, hell no, get somebody with experience. That's because we live in reality, not because we are any less qualified than these clowns. So that's reason number two. The third reason for these appointments dates back over a decade. And Steve Bannon, 
the architect of the MAGA movement, is at the heart of it. When you win the presidency, you get 3,000 uh, political appointees immediately, and you get 1,000 that have to be Senate confirmed. We're training many more than the 3,000. As you know, in 16, when we came from behind and won, we weren't really ready with the depth of talent you needed and the number of people uh, trained up to take over really the executive branch. This time, we're training much more than, than 3,000. The Heritage Organization, Center for Renewing America, all these different organizations that are conservative or on MAGA are training tens of thousands. Of 3,000 will be the first wave that hits that will really staff the Trump government at every level, from Department of Energy, Department of Defense. Every, every billet that needs to be filled will be filled pretty quickly in the, uh, in the second term. The first uh, line of attack is the administrative state, and certainly President Trump is going to replace members of the CIA, DNI, all that, which he has the prerogative to do. Those are the 1,000 Senate-confirmed positions. But President Trump will look to deconstruct the administrative state. The Supreme Court's already into this right now, uh, reviewing cases about downsizing this bureaucracy. MAGA does not want one more penny going to Zelensky and these corrupt oligarchs. The eastern uh, Russian-speaking border of uh, Ukraine is not in the vital national security interests of the United States. What's in the vital national security of the United States is the southern border of the United States about our sovereignty, our territorial integrity. And in addition, starting to have our NATO partners start to be an alliance and stop being a protectorate. You see, Bannon is a smart man who has been corrupted with evil. He might have spent the last few months in prison for defying a subpoena, but he's very much still the master manipulator, likely relaying policy ideas and plans to his protege, Stephen Miller, inside the Trump campaign, who just accepted the job as Trump's deputy chief of staff for policy. Bannon, who was chief executive of the 2016 Trump campaign in its final three months, then White House chief strategist for seven months before returning to the far-right Breitbart News, is aligned with the Russian leader's politics. Bannon, Trump and Putin might all claim that Russiagate was fake news, but they have something else in common. Trump's far-right nationalism, Europe's growing proto-fascist nativism, and Russia's own traditionalist, orthodox, church-based version of nationalism are converging, and there's evidence that they are increasingly working together, or at least in parallel. In 2018, Bannon toured Western Europe dispensing his benediction on Italy's far right. He spoke at a rally for France's fascist-tinged National Front. He met with a leader of Germany's far-right alternative for Germany, the AFD, and he praised Hungary's Viktor Orban, whose fascist-leaning, Islamophobic ruling party leant towards Putin. And it's worth remembering that for years Bannon looked favourably on Russia, not least because he apparently believes that Trump's America and Putin's Russia are Christian allies against the Muslim world, but Bannon sees Russia as the bastion of something not too far removed from the Catholic-inspired right-wing nationalism that he himself espouses and self-describes as Italian fascism. Mussolini would be proud. This is the same shit that Tucker Carlson was going on about after his disastrous interview with Putin shortly before the election when he was tasked with convincing Fox audiences that Russia was a great place to live with amazing grocery stores and trains. He left out the bit about how you'll get arrested and probably murdered for disrespecting the president. A lot of people that are traditionalists are attracted to that, meaning Russia, said Bannon. One of the reasons is that they believe at least Putin is standing up for traditional institutions. He's trying to do it in a form of nationalism. Steve Bannon and Tucker Carlson's language surrounding Russia is much the same as what you'll find in the Heritage Foundation's Mandate for Leadership document entitled Project 2025, which at its core is the same as Agenda 47 or the America First movement or the Reawaken America tour or any of that Christian nationalist white supremacy stuff. Deconstructing the administrative state was a metaphor for infiltrating it at every level putting a suspected Russian asset, Tulsi Gabbard, in as Director of National Intelligence, a powerful position that sits atop the nation's spy agencies and acts as the president's top intelligence advisor. Unlike past directors, she hasn't held any senior government roles. 
Trump has said that he wants to overhaul the nation's intelligence services, a sector of the federal government that he has long viewed with suspicion and distrust. Trump has blamed US intelligence agencies of seeking to undermine his first administration as well as his campaigns. Remember when he sided with Putin in Helsinki when he was asked if Russia had meddled in the 2016 election? He's also characterised the intelligence community as part of the deep state, this term for thousands of civil servants who work at a long list of government agencies and who Trump has never viewed as sufficiently loyal. Gabbard has caused most controversy for her views on Russia and was accused of being a traitor after she said that the US had been funding biological laboratories in Ukraine. She said these were being used to conduct research into dangerous pathogens, which bore a resemblance to a Russian conspiracy theory that Ukraine was creating bioweapons, something that RFK Jr. has talked about himself. We need to talk about bioweapons. Well, I know a lot now about bioweapons because I've been doing a book on it for the past two and a half years, and um, we have we've put hundreds of millions of dollars into uh, ethnically targeted microbes. The Chinese have done the same thing. In fact, COVID-19, there's an argument that it is ethnically targeted. Um, COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and, uh, and, uh, and uh, black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. Putin, like Trump, loves to deny things. Only last week he denied that he wanted Trump to win the election and was supporting Harris, the simplest form of information warfare that ended up spreading on X like wildfire. And with Elon Musk aligned with Putin and doing his algorithmic bidding and Trump's base coming around to seeing Putin as their friend rather than the foe and Zelensky's Ukraine as the enemy, you start to see how Steve Bannon's long-term plan is coming together. Put Trump loyalists who support Putin in all the top jobs, and there you have it. Without needing to physically demolish actual federal buildings, you've basically deconstructed the administrative state as we know it, systematically diminishing respect for America on the world stage, enabling Russia to become the world superpower. And if these positions get Senate approval, and with Republicans controlling both houses and the presidency, why wouldn't they? You have a perfect recipe for the takeover of American democracy. Trump has been used by his handlers and operators, a useful idiot manipulated to think that he's in control. The end of a liberal nation, liberal alliances and the security of mutual European protections. Goodbye Paris Climate Accord and goodbye NATO. This is what Americans voted for because they were told their eggs were too expensive in the grocery store. The ultimate confidence trick of bait and switch. I'm Anthony Davis. You can find me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel and podcast on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.